So how do you go from taking galaxy photos like this to taking galaxy photos like this? Photographing a galaxy can seem pretty tough, especially if you're in heavier light pollution like I am. So the first thing to pay attention to, especially if you're in heavy light pollution when you're photographing a galaxy, is to make sure you take enough exposure time. Um, basically this means photograph all nights worth, maybe two nights worth, maybe three or four, how many ever nights you can get in for a galaxy because galaxies are extremely dim compared to those nebulae that you have these specialized narrowband filters for. And since we don't have these kind of filters to photograph a galaxy besides the Optolong L Pro, which we'll talk about in a minute, um, technically it's going to be really hard to photograph them and get all the same kind of light out of them because you're going to get a lot of light pollution in the image as well as the galaxy, actually barely a galaxy at all in uh, individual subframes. So you could get something like the Optolong L Pro, but that has a few problems, mostly from vignetting. I've noticed a lot of times when I put the Optolong L Pro up to my camera, read it in there and everything, it tends to look very vignetted and there's a lot of gradients going on and you can see a whole shade of blue across the image. It's hard to fix and color balance and everything. Another thing I definitely recommend for galaxies is pretty much obvious, go to a dark site. Without a dark site, a galaxy won't look as good as you expect, especially from a light pollution zone like I'm in. Um, Galaxies are really dim, so you're not going to get much detail out of them in a light pollution city um, as you would like in dark site, like the Cherry Springs Star Party or other star parties in the world. Um, I would definitely recommend going to a dark site, like at least like a Border Class 4. They can see galaxies pretty well, maybe Border Class 5 if you don't have many around you. Now, if you can see the galaxy, but you're looking for nebulae like inside the galaxy spiral arms, I would definitely recommend investing in the HA filter. This would really help like with the nebulae to um, make them pop and look great. Um, I definitely recommend if you're trying to get into galaxy photography that you get a, also a higher aperture telescope like f1.4, or f2.8, something like really high um, aperture wise um, in terms of f ratio, focal ratio, um, because galaxies tend to be very dim. So the higher the f ratio, the more you can collect in a short amount of time. Now normally I'd recommend something like the William Optic Xenostar 61 for deep sky astrophotography, but this time, since we're talking about galaxies and they're a lot smaller generally, I'd recommend something like the Celestron Edge HD 8 which has a much larger aperture and also a good F ratio so we can zoom in still. Though I definitely recommend getting a reducer for something like this because the F ratio won't be great off the bat, but when you get a reducer, you can have a great F ratio at the same time as a great focal length. Just keep in mind, you're going to need a heavier payload capacity on your mount. This way it is able to handle the Edge HD 8 or whatever a larger aperture scope you get. Also, an Edge HD 8 could be really good for planetary astrophotography because this is a larger aperture so you can, even when you take the reducer off, you can zoom in far to the planets and get some amazing photos of the planets too. Now the good thing about photographing a galaxy, if you're not too concerned about the nebulae inside the actual galaxy, is that galaxies don't really need a modified camera, just like you don't need a modified camera to photograph the Milky Way. Um, the only time you really need a modified camera is if you're photographing infrared nebulae such as the horse head, uh, North American nebula, those kind of things, you need a modified camera. But for galaxies, unless you want to get the nebulae inside the galaxies, a modified camera is not an absolute must. Oh, by the way, my name is Asher and I make content all around astrophotography, so if you like to keep up with that kind of stuff, make sure to subscribe. Anyways, until next time, clear skies.